in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit the lord be with you, the lord be with you. a reading from the holy gospel according to john said to one another who can this be even the wind and the sea to worship god and to love on him and this very church exists take with this all through its heart and eat it so we can gather around for this is my body which will be given up for you
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. I think I've seen so many children go out for children's liturgy before, so that was lovely. A warm welcome to all of you and to them, uh, to anyone watching in our live stream, stream channel, like David and Nan Barnes, who David's been ill, um, so we welcome all of them too. Please uh, pray today, you, many of you will be sad to hear that Mary Farrington um, passed away after many decades in the parish and um, serving the church, so please pray for her. Today's gospel is about Jesus cleansing the temple. And maybe it relates to us because we're like temples of God too. And as we begin our Mass, let's ask the Lord to cleanse our hearts and minds and souls of sin. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Exodus. God spoke all these words. He said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of, out of the land of Egypt, out, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no gods except me. You shall not utter the name of your of Lord your God to misuse it. For the Lord will not leave unpunished the man who utters his name to misuse it. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honour your father and your mother so they may have a long life in the land that the Lord your God has given to you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. You shall not covert your neighbour's house. You shall not covet your neighbour's wife or his servant, man or woman or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is his. The word of the Lord. You, Lord, have the message of eternal life. 
You, Lord, have the message of eternal life. The law of the Lord, the Lord is perfect. It revives the soul. The rule of the Lord is to be trusted. It gives wisdom to the simple. Precepts of the Lord are right. They gladden the heart. The command of the Lord is clear. It gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is holy, abiding forever. The the decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. They are more they are more to be desired than gold, than the purest of gold, and are sweeter than they are than honey, than honey from the comb. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. While other Jews demand miracles and the Greeks look for wisdom, here are we preaching a crucified Christ. To the Jews, an obstacle that they cannot get over. To the pagans, madness. But to those who have been called, whether they are Jews or Greeks, a Christ a Christ who has power in the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. doing the gospel a bit differently this year so this week so if you don't mind sitting down we're going to um i'll tell you why in a moment she can do a little introduction and um and then the gospel and then sort of a meditation afterwards but i'll explain it as i go along so start by telling you about uh, this uh, priest in dublin it's a true story uh, father barry foster and when he used to go to his church he, parked his, he used to park his car on this really steep hill. And what people couldn't see, that as well as doing that, he had a little terrier dog in the back of the car. So this one day, he parked his car on this steep hill. And he gets out of the car, and he says to the dog, stay. And some guy's walking past and can't see the dog. You can just see the car on the steep hill. And the priest talking to the car. He says, Father, you know, you'd be better off if you just put the handbrake on. And in a way, you know, to someone who doesn't believe in God, a prayer is like talking to an empty car and expecting it to stay. But to the believer, prayer is the most powerful and the most reliable source in the world today, simply because we're communicating with God, our Creator, and our saviour. In the last two weeks, we've had a couple of people come into church, uh, two uh, young, young or youngish men, telling you about their experience of prayer. And I think, I don't know about for you, but for me, that's been really moving. But today, we're going to look at a different style of prayer, which is called, it's called Lexio Divina, which means divine reading. It's not a new thing. Is something that's been going on in monasteries for hundreds of years. And it's a way of praying using the scriptures. It's 
It's believing that when we read the scriptures, we're communicating with God. Because when we read the scriptures, we're listening to him speak to us. So prayer isn't always about talking. Like most communication, it's more about listening than talking. But it's also, when done in a certain way, a way in which we can speak to him as well. That's what we're going to try and do now. So I'm going to read the gospel to you. You're going to stay seated. Then I'm just going to lead you in a little meditation on that gospel. Are you ready? The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Just before the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And in the temple, he found people selling cattle and sheep and pigeons and the money changers sitting at their counters there. Making a whip out of some cord, he drove them all out of the temple, cattle and sheep as well, scattered the money changers' coins, knocked their tables over and said to the pigeon sellers, take this all out of here and stop turning my father's house into a market. Then his disciples remembered the words of scripture, zeal for your house will devour me. The Jews intervened and said, what sign can you show us to justify what you've just done? Jesus answered, destroy the sanctuary and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews replied, it's taken 46 years to build this sanctuary. Are you going to raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the sanctuary that was his body. And when Jesus rose from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the words he had said. During his stay in Jerusalem for the Passover, many came to believe in his name when they saw the signs that he gave. But Jesus knew them all and did not trust himself to them. He never needed evidence about any person. He could tell what they had in them. The Gospel of the Lord. And now I'm going to lead you, hopefully, in a meditation on these scriptures. So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do, if you would please, is um, close your eyes. Hang on to your handbags if you need to, but I'm sure they're going to be safe. So just close your eyes. One of the things we're going to try and do is empty our minds of all our thoughts. Just imagine maybe your mind is like a jug filled with fluid and the fluid is your thoughts. And I just want you just to pour out all the thoughts in your mind so that it's empty completely and your mind is clear try not to think just to feel to be aware of the physical things around you like just the bench touching your back or your clothing on your back or your legs feel the clothing touching your shoulders, your feet pressed against your shoes, and whatever your hands are touching. Don't think, just be aware of all the things touching your skin. Again, feel the bench against your back and legs. Any clothing touching your arms or shoulders. Your feet against your shoes. Maybe even just parts of whatever your fingers are touching. Just sense what's against your skin. Or your toes clothing on your elbows or shoulders. Just feel the things around you. 
even be aware of the breath as it enters your nostrils. Feel it. Imagine God's spirit is in that air. And as it enters the tips of your nostrils, you can feel that breath of God's spirit coming in and going out again. Don't think about it. Just feel the things about you. And as I read a bit of this gospel again, imagine yourself in this scene. Imagine yourself around the temple with all the other people, watching and listening, even the smell of the animals. In the temple, Jesus found people selling cattle and sheep and pigeons and the money changers sitting at their counters there. Jesus, making a whip out of some cord, drove them all out of the temple, cattle and sheep as well scattered the money changers' coins, knocked their tables over, and said to the pigeon sellers, take this all out of here, and stop turning my father's house into a market. Then his disciples remembered the words of scripture, zeal for your house will devour me. Just look around that scene. What noises can you hear? Can you see their faces? Do you notice the smells of the animals? Can you see the poor people who are trying to buy animals for sacrifices, counting their coins? and the rich who could pay so much more. Watch the crowds, hundreds of people, moving around, shouting, bartering and buying. And then when Jesus appears, the noise, the commotion, what happens with those stalls? The animals running around or the pigeons flying off. Can you see the Jewish leaders? How do they react? Do they look angry or shocked? Just look at the faces, the voices when Jesus says, take this all out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. Look at Jesus' face. Is he angry or just upset? Imagine his face as you stand there in the crowd. And now what about you? You here in this scene. Let Jesus look at you. What's his message? What's he saying to you? Look at his face and his eyes and listen to him now. What's he saying to you? What do you say to him? Are you responding or maybe you've got a question? Speak to him now too. And listen to what he says back.
now. If you haven't nodded off, we'll stand together and proclaim our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now we'll have our bidding prayers. Let us call on our Heavenly Father, who has spoken to us through the words of the Gospel, as we bring our petitions before him together now. For all those who are preparing to receive the sacrament of uh, our Easter will be to, to you a lifelong commit to you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. That the children in our schools who, who are making the first confessions to this week will be strongly strengthened by receiving God's healing grace. Lord, in your mercy. For those hungry and needy in the world, that we will be generous into sharing earth resources with them. Lord, in your mercy. Who, for those who are sick and for the, the carers that may feel comfort and support of God's healing presence. Lord, in your mercy. For those who have died recently, including Mary Farrington, Michael Clandy, Mary Fian, Mark Fian, Margaret Melding and Peter Sharon. May the Lord receive them into his heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Let us ask Mary, the Holy Mother of God, to pray for, for us and with, with us as we say, Hail Mary. In silence, we approach our loving Lord with our personal petitions. Father, send your Holy Spirit upon all who bear your name and seek to serve you with reverence. To you we make these prayers through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today we have 
talked about God's house, we come to church to pray and to be with Jesus in a special way. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. This morning's Mass is being offered for Michael Bolger and James McKeefrey. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbour. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time, for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. The prayer we say now is the prayer that Jesus himself taught us to the Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom is now and the glory Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Can our Eucharistic ministers who are bringing communion to the housebound please come forward? We ask the Lord's blessing on Mary and Bill as they minister to those who are housebound, uniting them with God in the Eucharist and also with our community. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. <coughs> As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished what's still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I don't know how um, you found that uh, meditation. It's called Lexio Divina. But um, as you know, it's a part of four... Sundays where we're focusing on prayer so let me know on your way out but the thing is it's not meant to be really a one-off it's about learning to pray in new ways and doing things that we can actually do at home and uh, you can get a little app there's that hallow app which does a different meditation every day just like that on the scriptures which enables you to enter into it and reflect a bit more so do have a little think about it maybe try some of those things at home to deepen our own uh, prayer life. Next weekend, we've got Sister Kathleen coming to reflect after the gospel on the Mass as a prayer too. Thanks uh, to anyone who came last night or involved in the cultural evening, which is a really great night and a really big success. Our next big event is um, with the Born for This presentation, a musical and dramatic presentation which is on the 22nd of March, a Friday evening. 
It's a great lead-in to Holy Week. So it's just before Palm Sunday. There's tickets at the back. It's only £2, and we're giving that £2 to CAFOD. So, um, but if, if you want to take five tickets for £2, you can. That's no problem. But those tickets are there, so please come along, because all those involved put loads of work into it. It'll be a great night and a beautiful lead-in to Holy Week. So they're available at the back of church today. We've got a big gardening day coming up a week on, on Thursday. Just let Bob know if you can make that. If we have 10 or 15 people, it just makes life a lot easier that way too. So please do let us know. Final thing I wanted to mention was is um, the abortion um, reflection on the bulletin. It is really quite important at the moment. As you know, our house over there is used for mums who find it difficult having their children, maybe aren't supported. There's six mums in there expecting babies. They're there all the time to change over. And it supports mums. Sometimes it can be really difficult for them. But the changes in the law are dangerous because already the law in the UK is the most liberal in Europe. So most countries in Europe have a 12-week limit in the UK, it's 24 weeks limit on abortion. And now they're changing it so that people could have an abortion up till the birth was due, even if they just wanted a different gender for their child. So it is dangerous. And what we're saying is both lives matter, both the mum and the child. And changing the laws will change that. And a couple of weeks ago, they brought in a beautiful thing where mums who'd had a miscarriage could get a certificate just to say that that child, that baby existed. And this is like the opposite of that, really. So please, if you can find the time, write a letter into your MP, our MP, who's very good, but probably not good on this issue, and um, just make our feelings known. Because if we don't speak up for them, then probably nobody will. Great to see so many people here. We hope you have a blessed week ahead and um, thank you for coming. The Lord be with you. And well done to our young readers. May the blessing of Almighty God come down upon you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God.